I am very excited about our next guest, and I think you guys are going to be too. This is Banachek, the world's leading mind reader. Thank you so much for coming this morning. Uh, it's my pleasure to be here. So go ahead and tell me a little bit of your background. Sure. So a lot of people say, how did you get started? Many years ago, when I was very young, I saw a man on TV, and he claimed he could bend metal with his mind. And I believed him, and I believed that I had actually bent a little pin with my mind. It wasn't until years later that I read a book by a gentleman by the name of James Randi. And Randi wrote this book, and he claimed that these things were tricks. And nobody else had told me that. Mm -hmm. And so I started creating tricks in my mind, things that looked like real mind reading. And I was able to bend metal objects with my mind. Washington University in St. Louis was given half a million dollars to study metal bending all of a sudden. And I saw the Associated Press article and I wrote them a letter and I said, look, uh, I can bend metal with my mind. And I was lying at the time. I said, I can bend metal with my mind. And they said, well, we'd love for you to come in. Now, this has already been planned because I spoke to Randy. I said, if you ever need a kid to try to fool scientists into believing that somebody can bend metal, I would love to do this. Hilarious. So we went in with two hypotheses. One, um, there was no scientific evidence of ESP under controlled conditions at those times. And it was our belief that um, it had nothing to do with the lack of funding, even though scientists says, we have no money, we have no money. It's why we don't have any scientific conditions. Uh, and we can't set them up properly. It, it was our contention it had nothing to do with a lack of money. And uh, the other thing was we believed that the scientists thought that they were too smart because they had PhDs, that they would not ask the expert opinion of somebody who detected the trickery. So for four years I went in, uh, convinced them I could bend metal with my mind, and after four years I came out and explained it was all an illusion. Oh, no. And that was called Project Alpha. And it hit all the airwaves. I mean, it was in every major national newspaper. Mm -hmm. It was all over the place. And in fact, in most of the universities and colleges right now, if you take a look at the parapsychology textbook or the psychology textbook, my name is in there. Wow, that yeah. is so fascinating, very interesting, and so random that someone, you know, just got money all of a sudden to, for metal bending, I mean, how random is that? Well, uh, <laughs> McDonnell Douglas, uh, who built all the aircraft back in those days, he knew he was getting old, he knew he didn't have much time to live, and he figured if you could prove there was some sort of psychic powers, maybe there's an afterlife, okay. and so that's why he donated the money. Very interesting, yeah. all right. Well, so now we talked a little earlier about, sure. the, you said that there is a difference between a thought reader and a mind reader. So right. I want to hear what that is. Well, you call me a mind reader in the beginning, yes. and that's not exactly accurate. And it's an easy mistake that every person makes. Uh, and let me explain why. Okay. Because they go, oh, you read minds. Well, I don't. What I do is I read thoughts. Now, if a husband and wife are sitting on a park bench, pretty girl goes jogging by, husband turns his head and looks, wife slaps the husband in the face. Well, you know what the husband was thinking. You know what the wife was mm -hmm. thinking, right? You haven't read their minds, but you've read their thoughts. Their body language mm -hmm. is told you something. Um, I also use nonverbal communication as well. Uh, for instance, uh, if I said Dolly Parton, what two things come to mind? Singer-songwriter, right? Oh, yeah. yeah. But, right. but that's verbal communication, right? <laughs> I mean, that's basically you get the gist of that, but I can do it on a much more subtle level. If somebody comes to me after the show and said, read my mind, I can't do that. But if they come up to me after a show they've seen and they punch me in the face, I know what they thought about the show, yeah. right? So that's what I do, but I do it on a much more subtle level. I read body cues, okay. and I mix magic with it as well to create a show. Very interesting. So, did you actually go to school for this, or you just have studied it very intensely? Or? Came natural for me. Some okay. people sit down, they play the piano, right. and it just comes natural, mm -hmm. and they play anything they can hear. Other people take lessons for years, and they just mm -hmm. can't get it right. I'm very lucky that I'm able to do these things just naturally. Oh, I yeah. create things like Penn and Teller's Bullet Catch okay. at Penn and Teller, the magicians in Las Vegas. That's mine. I sell big tricks to other magicians. David Blaine opened his second TV special with one of my effects. Um, I did four seasons of Chris Angel Mind Freak. We, we can talk about that a little bit later right. on as well. So, okay. creating magic. Awesome. Well, um, now go ahead and you're going to be performing at Dalton, Darton College. Yes. Um, and But it's only open to students there, so I'm sorry you guys won't be able to see him, mm. but if you're a Darton College student, you're in luck because you can get in free with your student ID. And so that's very exciting. Tell us a little bit about, as much as you can, of what you'll be doing. I'll be doing what I consider the world's largest ESP experiment, uh, which I might do something like that on a smaller scale with you in just a little bit. All right. Um, and uh, I'll be doing things like playing Russian roulette with knives, where if I fail, I end up dying. Uh, I'll be demonstrating what they call x-ray vision, where I'm completely blindfolded and people hold objects over my head and I describe what the objects okay. are. Uh, I'll be doing all kinds of weird, unusual things, probably doing a voodoo routine where somebody's hand starts to bleed when they stick a needle in a little drawing of their hand. Ew. So strange. Does that hurt? 
It doesn't hurt me. <laughs> oh, uh oh, I hope none of you have to volunteer for that. That sounds painful. Yeah. Well, um, that's very exciting. So now you have a couple of things you're going to be sure. doing on the show. He's going to be on a couple other times this morning, so you're going to want to stay tuned. Um, is there something that we can do right now? I can right now. Okay. Um, do you, you remember the name of the first person yes, you ever I kissed? Yes, I do. Yeah, I do. You, he asked me you, this embarrassing question. Yeah. And you didn't tell me, though. You have I not told tell me. Him. Okay, I so keep it in your mind. Don't okay. say anything. I just asked you if you could remember that, because yes. otherwise it's silly for me to ask you that on the air. Right. If you say, no, I don't. Yes. Um, I want to try something. I'm going to lay this okay. out on this little little table. Now, this is your table, not my table. Right. This, so, we, we yeah, have this here. I'm going to lay this here like this. Okay. All right. And hopefully, we can get a, a fairly decent shot of this. I'm going to need uh, some a paper as well, and I'm going to put that right there. Okay. I will need a pen, and I'm going to put that right there. And I'm going to stand right here. I just want you to take this hand and put it on my shoulder there. Okay. I'm going to cover this up. Yeah. Let's go around this way. Is this magic paper? No, it's not magic okay. paper. Is that a magic pen? Not a magic pen. Is that the same pen that I wrote on earlier? I don't know. Okay, okay. <laughs> so, but I want you to imagine, what I do want you to imagine, is I want you to imagine the pen standing up and writing out the name of the first person you ever kissed, all okay. right? So watch, here we go. Uh, I know it looks a little strange. Keep thinking about it. Okay. All right, I think we've got it. Now, don't say anything just yet. Okay. Look at me. Keep your hand on my shoulder. Oh. Think of the grade you were in at this time. Okay. Don't say anything. First, second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. First, seven, eight, nine, seven, eight. Eighth grade? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> and if we can come in close on this, what was the name? Um, do I have to say it out loud? This is so just awkward. Just the first name. Okay. Uh, <laughs> Dustin. Dustin. Oops. Weird. <laughs> you might that want to show so that to the camera. Creepy. This camera down here. Oh, well, there we go. He got it right, guys. Dustin, it is. I'm um, so embarrassed right now, actually. <laughs> 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 Hope he's not watching. <laughs> <laughs> Probably awesome. not. Well, that is fascinating. That is really cool. And actually, um, I don't even think this is my handwriting, by the way. No, so that would be, that would be the, the pen's, pen's handwriting. handwriting. <laughs> Did you get to pick out the pen's handwriting? Is there like a setting no, for that? Nothing no. like that. Okay. No setting for that. <laughs> Just an ordinary big pen. You can have it if you want it. Well, so, thanks. Yeah. Okay. You're welcome. Little souvenir. <laughs> awesome. Well, um, Tell us a little bit more about, you said you, you originally came from England. I was born in so England. That's pretty cool. I was born in England, left when I was nine, South Africa seven years, Australia, oh. the United States. So I've been all over the world, wow. still traveling all over the world. At the point, I was doing about 250 colleges a year. So wow. yeah. Fascinating.